Hey Bulls and Bears, JJ here, you're watching Bull Bull and Bear Bust. It is Tuesday, March 3rd. A lot of big things happening, I wanted to put this out before I go to work today. Uh, topics on hand, let me go to my checklist here. Emergency, 50 base point rate cut to combat the panic. The market is pricing in multiple rate cuts and stimulus, so the market is forward looking, but stocks are not responding that favorably as of this recording and that's a big red flag we want to talk about that uh, the bank repo bailout spikes to over 100 billion and if stocks do not jump we need to beware and need to be aware that something bigger could be on the horizon something bad uh, or good it depends on your position uh, there's a lot of you out there that are waiting for the market crash you're in a position uh, you're heavily in cash and you're waiting for a correction I get that absolutely so instead of beware, let me change this to aware. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. All right, here is the uh, the big ones that I watched: the S and P, the Dow, the Nasdaq, all just up fractionally, even after the announcement of the emergency rate cut. Now we did see the market jump initially on the news. And we saw over a 1% pop there. Now we're back into the red if you look at the far right. We're probably going to see it bounce up and down, but it's going to be the closing bell. That's going to be the real story today. Now why am I talking about the stock market? Because it's a very big uh, bragging point for the current administration, right? How many times have you heard them talk about, look at the stock market, look at the stock market, look at your 401k. Everybody's getting rich. Now, up until now, all it took was a little bit of jawboning, uh, the announcement of rate cuts, um, you know, confidence boosters that the Fed is going to have the back of this economy, and you saw stocks really take off and roar. Now we have a 50 basis point emergency rate cut. That's a half a percent, and actually it's the biggest rate cut since the financial crisis, and this is what stocks are doing so far. Now, of course, we're going to see what happens today. But this is not looking good at all, and it's telling me more and more that maybe the Fed has lost control. Now, I know there's been some debate, and I see some of you debating down in comments if the Fed is buying stocks directly or not. Well, here's the way to look at it. If your wife says you're drinking too much, and she says, do not buy any alcohol, do not buy any alcohol, and you're like, yeah, I promise I won't buy any alcohol. All right, so instead, you give the money to your neighbor, and you say, hey, go get me some alcohol. Go to the liquor store. Neighbor goes, brings you back your alcohol. Your wife comes home. You're drinking alcohol. She gets mad. She said, hey, you said you wouldn't buy any alcohol. You're like, I didn't. I didn't. My neighbor gave it to me. And your wife's like, where's the $50? That was sitting right here. Well, I gave it to the neighbor. He bought it. The same thing is happening. This money is ending up in the stock market via Fed liquidity injections. Now, we know a lot of it is just overnight lending, and banks do interbank lending to keep their reserve requirements in the solvency uh, category. But I think everybody knows that institutions, they're heavily into investing in stocks, buying stocks, right? Banks are buying stocks, uh, corporations are buying stocks hand over fist, stock buybacks, and not just with stimulus money, but with their own profits but with all this happening right now stocks are looking very very weak and again we're gonna see how it plays out but let's talk about the repo bailouts next today repo bailout injection spiked to a hundred billion and just like we told you this is not going to stop they're gonna to have to keep on pumping liquidity into the system but it looks like more of this now is just going to keep the banks operational and less so into the stock market. Uh, but $100 billion today, that was a uh, multi-month high going all the way back to the beginning, actually. Just in case we needed another confirmation that there was a big problem in the banking system, uh, dealers submitted $108 billion in overnight repo, resulting in the first oversubscribed overnight repo operation since October. Right, so what is it? You tell me what's your guess. Is it the subprime auto loans that are defaulting at record numbers? Is it the credit card delinquencies that are also spiking? 
that's causing less of the stimulus to be flowed into the stock market? Right? Are there stock buyers and traders not following orders? Right? Is there a revolt happening behind the scenes? Right? Nobody knows exactly, but all we can do is watch the price movement, uh, look at the numbers, look at the data that we do have um, at our fingertips. Also, guess what else is following? Mortgage rates. Mortgage rates are now near all-time lows. Here is just a two-year chart, and you see here just in two years, we're down almost a full percentage point, and we know that low rates tend to spread across multiple sectors, and housing is seeing a big boost from these lower rates as well. And now with this emergency rate cut, you can expect the housing market and home prices to stay strong and likely uh, still keep climbing, even though they're in bubble territory. Uh, they're doing everything they can to keep this bubble inflated and keep it from deflating until the end of the 2020 calendar year. Um, Fox Business is even acknowledging this. Uh, today with this headline, Stock Seesaw After Fed's Emergency Rate Cut. And again, this is huge. This is the biggest rate cut since the financial crisis. Think about that. Right, so the market makers, they are implementing financial crisis level types of policies here and if you look at the repo bailouts it's even beyond what had occurred back then we did not see this long uh, this many months continuous of repo bailouts so again I want to reiterate I changed this from beware to be aware because there's always the bears that are waiting for this market to come down so depending on your position you know today's information may be good maybe bad news for you uh, myself personally instead of being at the a peak or near the peak of a bubble, uh, wondering if they're going to keep inflating it with these emergency measures and job owning and uh, basically lies to try to keep everybody confident, you know, in the economy and the fake economy. Um, I would rather see it deflate. That way, I know um, where we're at. But we're at the point now where there's so much uncertainty and so many things happening behind the scenes that I don't think anybody knows exactly, you know, where we're headed. But we do know that this is dangerous waters that we're headed into, right? We have fake markets everywhere, fake prices, right? Repos are spiking, emergency rate cuts. Oh, and by the way, the screen that you're looking at right now, this is my Robinhood account. Um, still not able to access my positions today. Um, I missed out on the big rally yesterday. I'm thinking about just liquidating this whole brokerage account here. Let me actually try to refresh and see if we're going to see anything on our screen here now what's being discussed here by a few people is that Robinhood had a glitch because of the leap year they didn't program uh, for leap year but February 29th has passed and here we are now on March 3rd are they gonna be I mean out all year because of February 29th I mean come on sometimes you gotta draw the line so it's looking more and more like I'm just going to go ahead and stay out of these markets. I still have my E-Trade account, um, but it's starting to be not worth it anymore. I mean, this is a big headache. It's not my – oh, wait. We just came up with something here. Okay, now some news has populated in Robinhood. Let's try to go to my portfolio here. All right, I want you to see where I'm clicking here. So see, clicking my portfolio, nothing is showing up right now. It's just news. So Robinhood still – Glitching out pretty bad. Okay, bulls and bears. So what's the takeaway from all of this? Let's try to be prepared. Now, when I first started this channel, from time to time, I would talk about preparation. A lot of people were questioning, you know, hey, this is a financial channel. Why are you talking about preparation and storing food and, you know, having an emergency fund? You know, you sound kind of crazy. Well, that's because this bubble right now is being propped up by fiat funny money interventions injections and when they let it come down or if they're no longer capable of keeping the economy propped up then we're gonna see big trouble we're already starting to see big trouble we have supply chains breaking down freight shipments are crashing right and this is what happens when you're not self-reliant so the United States as a country we are not self-reliant we have chosen over the many decades to outsource the manufacturing of most of our goods to lower priced uh, countries countries with lower labor costs 
and this is the price we pay. So centralization, outsourcing, not good. And we can all learn from this. Look at yourself individually. Are you self-sufficient? Are you over leveraged? Do you have too many debts, too many month to month uh, bills to pay? And what's going to happen if you lose a job? Are you going to be running to the government? Okay, that's going to be about all for this report here. Uh, we are entering very, very uh, dangerous times right now. Uh, when we get to the other side of whatever's going to happen, uh, the bubble bursting, preferably as opposed to hyperinflation. I would much rather see deflation. I think a lot less people get hurt in deflation uh, when we look at what's happened in other countries that have witnessed hyperinflation. Again, the game uh, for these string pullers is to keep this thing pumped up through the end of 2020. Right, The current administration, they do not want this coming down on their watch, but it's looking more and more like it may not happen. Right, but keep in mind, there's always going to be excuses, and that's why I expect more big events to unfold, uh, possibly even bigger than this current sickness that we see spreading across the globe. You know, So be prepared, be aware, and uh, be ready for anything. That's all for this report. Thanks for being here, everybody. Ride the bull, prepare for the bear. Bye for now.